AI, can gaming truly change the country for the better? Today, we're going to look at gaming for growth, driving economic development in the global south. So by leveraging the power of gaming and emerging technology, we can unlock new opportunities for growth and innovation in the global south. So during this time together, we will discuss how gaming can create jobs, promote entrepreneurship, drive investment in infrastructure and education. We will also examine a couple of case studies from the region of the Global South that highlight successful gaming-based economic development initiatives. So engage with me in the conversation and on how gaming can be a powerful tool for economic progress in the Global South. So today we will talk about the potential of leveraging gaming for economic development in um, the Global South, um, so when we talk about the Global South first, we're talking about um, South Asia, Africa, um, South America. Um, so yes, the Global South. So we will focus on the role of gaming in creating jobs, as I said, entrepreneurship, and we will share some case studies. So who am I? I am Joanna Riquier. I'm a gaming business strategist, a diversity advocate, and a guest speaker. Um, I'm, I specialize in the Middle Eastern and African market, and I, I'm known to have pioneer, pioneered economic development and government gaming partnership in the region, whilst um, I was um, at Unity Technology, and now with my company, Gemergent Solutions. I'm currently based in Senegal, in Africa, West Africa, French speaking West Africa. I also, diversify, I also advocate for diversifying content, content creators, community to promote diversity and social impact project in digital and gaming space. I'm also a serial entrepreneur because I've got a couple of over um, entrepreneur, uh, entrepreneur uh, entrepreneurship ventures uh, in lifestyle management and um, in business strategy and education. So whilst, as I was saying, um, we can start by a brief overview of the potential of gaming for economic development in the global south. Firstly, the gaming industry itself can create jobs and generate revenue for countries in the global south. This can include game development, publishing, and distribution, as well as over and associated industries such as esports and streaming. So, as I am in Africa, I've got flies, so I'm very sorry. Sometimes it's there, um, but well. Secondly, the gaming industry can drive innovation and technology development in the global south. Um, the game development will require skills in coding, design, and AI, and those skills uh, can be leveraged, of course, such uh, in other industries such as, such as education, such so as tech, healthcare, finance, oil and gas, architecture. We heard about metaverse in real estate. So. Um, whilst games before was a uh, vertical, now gaming is a whole gaming and emerging tech applied to all um, industries. So thirdly, so gaming can serve as a platform and it's, it's already serving as platform for social and economic empowerment. Um, so for example, games can be designed to promote financial literacy, entrepreneurship, entrepreneurship and STEM education. Um, and that can help equip individuals with skills that they didn't, didn't have and that are in demand. Uh, here, I can give you an example uh, for Senegal. Um, some countries in Africa, don't the, the level of literacy is quite low, of education is quite low. And uh, financial institutions are looking at games and gamifi gamifi gamified application in order to promote the um, the banking system. Um, the informal market and the informal uh, um, 
commerce business here is 80, 80 to 90 percent in Africa. And because of mobile wallet, bank, banks, bank, like in fin financial institution have, ha have a hard time uh, to actually uh, provide this trust uh, to, um, to customer. So they're using and they're looking at using gamified um, application for, um, to promote financial illiteracy. And lastly, gaming can serve as well uh, as a means of cultural expression and representation. So um, games, and we have seen here an increase since the last two, three years, uh, an increase in requirement for um, the diversity and the richness of, of culture in the global South. And that can as well turn itself in promotion of the tourism and drive economic growth. So as we can already see, um, game can be um, a potential, the potential of gaming can really drive economic development from every, um, every, every, from every direction. And it's significant because the opportunity uh, from countries in the global south can leverage the power of technology and create it, creativity to drive sustainable growth. Um, secondly, so the first our first talk, our first point was the, the overview of the potential of gaming. The second point will be importance of leverage the importance of leverage gaming. Uh, and emerging technology for economic growth. Um, here are the few key points for that. So job creation, gaming and emerging tech, uh, such as virtual, uh, technolo virtual technology, virtual reality, augmented reality, those require a set of skills and expertise. So as I was saying earlier, coding, design, art, storytelling, data analysis, and this industry today can create a range of job opportunity across different sectors. So from the software development to content creation and thereby economic growth, um, providing those skill sets to the population is basically uh, a, a driving economic growth because those new talent that's going to be formed are going to be uh, working either creating new new business or working for international, local, or, or, or continental businesses. <clears throat> so innovation, gaming and emer emerging tech are constantly evolving and the industry known is known for its creativity and innovation. So businesses can introduce new products and services and we can see in the uh, global south that the challenges, the daily challenges that um, when you that you are faced to when you are when you live in the country uh, can actually uh, the, the, the solutions that we can drive with innovation, gaming and uh, emerging tech innovation can actually help and have, we have already seen that he have helped um, leapfrog into the future. Uh, it's been a year that I'm, uh, I'm living in Senegal and I can tell you that it is not like, it is not as when you um, visit, there, there you can see a lot of challenges and those uh, and the emerging tech and ad advocate strongly for emerging techs because I can see how our businesses can uh, introduce new products, new services, improve the existing one and really find innovative solution to problem that we can find in the Western world. And I would say here by comparison, the global north. Um, so fostering the global south is a, a, a way, a place to foster innovation and driving, driving economic growth. Thirdly, um, we could look at into improved customer experience. So game 
gaming and emerging tech can also enhance the customer experience by creating more immersive and engaging experiences. So VR and AR can be used to create interactive and personal experiences, thereby improving customer satisfaction and loyalty and ultimately driving new revenue. Um, no, fourth, no, fourth point, uh, new business opportunities. Um, new business opportunities with new revenue streams. Um, business can leverage uh, VR. So we have seen that the architecture industry now leverage VR to uh, provide experiences to um, clients that want prospects that want to uh, purchase a house or just have a uh, or to just visit a house to see whether it's going to be as they want. Uh, the businesses can also leverage VR to create new training program, um, and they can use AR to enhance product um, demonstra demonstration and uh, marketing campaign. So all of these new opportunities can drive revenue and create a competitive advantage in the market. Uh, the last point on this on, the, on this uh, topic will be international competitiveness. Um, so leveraging gaming and imaging tech can also improve a country international competitiveness. Having now the new oil, the new gold is the um, the talent, the people. So the more people we have skilled uh, to be in tech, so um, coding, uh, design, etc. So the more a country can become um, competitive to be a hub for gaming and innovation and transformation. So the countries that in invest in this industry can attract foreign investment, talent and businesses, thereby creating a more innovative and competi competitive economy. So um, leveraging gaming and emerging tech can drive economic growth and innovation by creating job opportunities, fostering innovation, improving customer experiences, creating new businesses opportunity and improving a country international competitiveness. Therefore, government and businesses should invest in this industry to reap the benefit of this rapidly growing sector. So the role of the economic, the gaming and economic uh, development. So gaming, the gaming potential for job creation, entrepreneurship has, significant, um, has a significant place. As we know, the global gaming industry is projected to generate over 200 billion revenue in 2023. And this growth is creating new opportunity for games developer, designer, and other professionals. So some of the way in which gaming can drive job creation and entrepreneurship in emerging professionals include game development. So game development requires a uh, diverse set of skills, uh, programming, graphic design, sound engineering. So it can create for individual a wide range of expertise. Uh, so emerging markets can invest in game development to create new job and establish themselves as a hub for game development. It includes as well eSport. So eSport, which is the competitive video gaming is a rapidly growing industry that offers new opportunities for job creation and entrepreneurship. So eSports event require a range of professionals from event planners and marketing specialists to pro production crews and commentators. Um, it includes as well the gaming relative service. So the game industry requires a range of service, game localization, q and &A, a QA, customer supports, and those can be provided by local entrepreneur in emerging markets, which will create new businesses and jobs. It also include gaming education. Emerging market can invest in gaming education to prepare 
individual for careers in the gaming industry. So this will include courses on game development, courses on design, marketing, um, and as well as training program for esports professional. So the gaming market has significant potential for job creation and entrepreneurship in emerging markets. So by investing in the gaming industry and related service, emerging markets can create new job opportunities and establishing themselves as key players in the global gaming industry. So we do have as well the gaming potential to drive investment in infrastructure and education in several ways. So because Often we can see that in the global south, the infrastructure are lacking. We talk about uh, create the opportunity for growth about gaming education. So the potential to drive investment need to be here. The high speed internet internet infrastructure. Um, the online gaming requires uh, high speed internet. Um, which can drive investment in broadband networks and related infrastructure. So according to the World Bank, every 10% increase in broadband penetration can lead to a 1.4% increase in GDP growth in developing countries. I repeat, every 10% increase in broadband penetration can lead to a 1.4% increase in GDP growth in developing countries which means that government and countries that, and private companies that really want to um, increase economic development and see growth can definitely look into high-speed internet infrastructure. The example for driving the potential for driving, driving investment is the gaming center. Gaming center and or esports arena can be established to host gaming events and competition. So this center requires state of art equipment, high performance gaming PC, gaming peripheral, high speed internet, and that can drive investment in technology infrastructure such as data center, fiber optics network, and servers. And we do have the gaming education as well, which can be used to promote education and learning. Educational games can be developed to teach subjects as math, science, history. Just uh, last year, I worked on a project to provide remediation for children because on um, 10 students at will, I don't know where you are, where you are based, but uh, I would say A level, for example, for the UK, um, or just just after after college uh, for for the US or for French people, the baccalaureate. So for ten people having this degree, hundred like nine of them will be male and one will be female, uh, and basically there is a drop every at every single significant um stage so after primary school after um after uh secondary school um so that application was was created to provide remediation and for children in order for them to go further into their education so it was a game that was not only providing remediation, but first of all, they were assessing the level of the of the of the student. Um, so some of the um, example, we've got some example that of how gaming has driven investment in infrastructure and education. So I've taken some example of in, in every single uh, part of the global south. So India. The India government launched the Digital India program in 2015, um, which aimed to provide broadband connectivity to all citizens and promote um, the use of digital technology as part of this program. 
the government has invested in gaming centers and gaming education programs to promote entrepreneurship and innovation. In Africa, South Africa has invested in the development of high-speed internet infrastructure to support the gaming industry. Um, and in addition, the country has established gaming hub and gaming education programs to promote economic growth and job creation. And in South America, Brazil has invested in the development of gaming infrastructure, including the establishment of gaming centers and esports arenas. So additionally, the government has supported the development of gaming education programs to promote innovation and entrepreneurship. So overall, the gaming as industry has significantly, uh, can significantly pro pro uh, provide drive investment in infrastructure and education. And by leveraging the power of gaming, country can promote economic growth, job creation, and innovation. Um, so let's go back to a couple of, um, of example of successful gaming-based economic development initiative in the global uh, south. There are several of them. Um, I didn't want to be biased, <laughs> so I, 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 I took some, some uh, for example, so Egypt, the, Egypt, the Egyptian government launched the Game Egypt Initiative in 2014. Um, this um, government initiative promoted the gaming industry and established Egypt as a hub for game development in the Middle East and North Africa. So the initiative provided funding and support for game developers and established gaming center to provide innovation and entrepreneurship. As a result of this effort, Egypt's gaming industry has grown significantly with more than 60 game development companies operating in the countries. So Brazil, Brazil has established several gaming hub and gaming education program to promote economic growth and job creation. The government has also invested in the development of high-speed internet infrastructure and established tax incentives for the gaming industry. As a result, Brazil gaming industry has grown significantly with more than 300 game development companies operating in the countries. Malaysia, Malaysia, government uh, launched the Game On initiative in 2016, promoting the gaming industry and establishing Malaysia as a hub for game development in Southeast Asia. The initiative provided funding and support for game development, established gaming centers, and promoted gaming edu education program. So as a result, Malaysia gaming industry has grown significantly with more than 150 game development companies operating in the countries. And lastly, South Africa has invested in the development of high-speed internet infrastructure to support the gaming industry. Additionally, the country has established gaming hub and gaming education programs to promote economic growth and job creation. So South Africa gaming industry has grown um, with more than 100 game development companies operating in the country. Um, you may know as well about Africa Games Week, which, um, uh, which is held every December in Cape Town. So this initiative demonstrates the potential of gaming to drive economic development and job creation in Global South. So by investing in the gaming industry, and related infrastructures, country can promote innovation, entrepreneurship, and economic growth. So I know it's we we hearing the same uh, the same words, but this is actually what's what is happening and what we can do with um, the gaming industry. Um, so the looking at a detailed case study for Egypt. They are made, Egypt has made significant progress in recent years to become a game development in the MENA region. So the initiative funded 
um, provided funding and support for game developer, established gaming centers to promote innovation and entrepreneurship. And the number of game development companies in the country only increased from a handful to over 60 companies, which now employ 2,000 people. So some of these companies have developed popular games such as Assassin's Creed, uh, Tom Clancy Ghost Recon, and attracted investment from international gaming company, companies such as Ubisoft. So it had had the, the, the growth, this growth had a positive impact on the country's economy. So according to a report by the International Data Corporation, the gaming industry in Egypt is expected to generate 1.1 billion in revenue by 2025. So creating new jobs and boosting economic growth. Looking at Malaysia, Malaysia has established a regional game development hub. Um, the Game On initiative, as I was saying, telling you earlier, funding, support for game developer, establishing game center, and game and promoting gaming education program. As a result, we the country went from 20 to over 150, and this industry now employs more than 10,000 people. The popular games that was developed by some of these companies uh, are Mobile Legend and Agent Eli. Ali, Eli. Ali, sorry, Agent Ali, and have attracted investment from international gaming companies such as Tencent. The positive impact that provided uh, a growth for Malaysia, and according to the Malaysian Investment Development Authority, the gaming industry in Malaysia is expected to generate one billion revenue dollar by 2025. So again, new job boosting economic growth. So we're going to come to, to the end to really look into how and the challenges and the opportunities. But let me go first to my last example. Uh, my last example is Brazil, which um, use gaming to promote entrepreneurship and innovation in the country. So they invested in the infrastructure, um, they invested in establishing gaming center and sport arena, and they have supported the gaming ed education program for innovation and enterprise. So they went from uh, game development companies from 20 to over 300 and now employ 10,000 10, people. Some of the companies that have they are developed popular games such as Horizon Zero Dawn or Street Fighter V, and of course, some investment from international gaming companies such as Sony and Capcom. The Brazilian Association of Game Developer um, said that Brazil is due to generate one point, had, no, have they generated 1.6 billion US dollar uh, in 2020 and creating new jobs and boosting economic growth. So overall, this case study demonstrates the potential of gaming, of the gaming industry to drive economic growth and job creation in the global south. So by investing in the gaming industry and related infrastructure, countries can promote innovation, entrepreneurship and economic development. What are the key factors contributing to those success for, for Brazil, for uh, Brazil, Malaysia, Egypt? Government support. In all those three countries, the government played a critical role in supporting the gaming industry. They provided funding, they established gaming industry uh, centers, they, pro they promoted gaming education programs to foster innovation and entrepreneurship. Secondly, access to funding. Access to funding is critical for game developers to get their project off the ground. The government in Egypt, Malaysia, and Brazil provided funding for game developer, either for grant, loan, or tax incentive. And we can see that in any countries, not only in, global, in the global south, everywhere, 
in the in the world when there is government support and access to funding there is indeed uh, growth in the industry so france germany the uk um i'm talking about uh, the one i know um they they all have a uh, government month support and access to funding Thirdly, infrastructure, the availability of infrastructure, so such as gaming centers and esports arenas, is important to foster the growth of the gaming industry. The government in Egypt, Mal Malaysia, and Brazil invest in, in the development of gaming industry to support the industry. Fourth, the talent, the talent pool. So a skilled talent pool is essential for the success of the gaming industry. Um, all of those governments investing in gaming education programs to develop a skilled workforce for the industry. And lastly, global partnership. So establishing partnership with international gaming companies is critical to the success of the gaming industry in, 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 and in all those all these free country international gaming company have invested in the local gaming industry, which of course helped to foster its growth and development. Um, the very last point, the supportive ecosystem. So creating a supportive ecosystem for game development is crucial to the success of the industry. So, Egypt, Malaysia, and Brazil created a supportive environment for game developers by providing funding, infrastructure, and education. So as we can see, all of those uh, gaming-based economic initiatives in the Gold Glass Earth can be attributed to a combination of government support, access to funding, infrastructure, talent pool, global partnership, a supportive ecosystem. Um, this factor has helped to foster innovation, entrepreneurship, and economic development in the gaming industry. A couple, I wanted to highlight a couple of um, industries that are uh, really and uh, severely looking into having a gaming-based economic development are the UAE, uh, Dubai, Dubai with the Dubai Gaming Hub and Abu Dhabi with the 2454, uh, which actually uh, took part of uh, what's opportunity. Um, the Dubai Gaming Hub provides a play platform for game developer and entrepreneurship to show their project, collaborate, and access to funding. In Abu Dhabi, 2454 provide um, the gaming, the gaming program, the gaming education program provide funding, provide the infrastructure, and provide tax incentive uh, support as well. Um, in Saudi Arabia, Saudi Arabia, uh, if you haven't done it, look, look, Google Saudi Arabia gaming industry. The, um, the global uh, Saudi Saudi Arabia is investing. Uh, billions of US dollars to, because they recognize the potential of the gaming industry. I'm sure you know at least one person who is going to leave as a consultant or leave uh, at least, I've, I've, I know at least at least 10 of my contacts are now in Saudi Arabia, uh, supporting the government uh, to drive this economic growth and diversification. So they establish the to promote the entertainment sector in the country and the Saudi Arabian Federation for Le Electronic and Te Intellectual has um, provided uh, the government has launched this uh, provide this uh, program and they are responsible for sport tournament and event in the country. So invest they've invested heavily in the gaming infrastructure gaming job creation gaming education and creating that economic uh that eco ecosystem that uh, supporting ecosystem um we're going to look at the challenges or what are the challenges so as well as we have seen the opportunities the challenges and the not the opportunities the how what was the key factors it's evident that your challenges are the infrastructure. 
infrastructure, um, internet connectivity is improving, yes. But today, for example, I'm in Senegal and in order for me to stay with you, I had to plug another, a backup. Usually, I would say 95% of the time, my internet is good. I've got access to uh, power, um, but I've visited countries such as Nigeria or South Africa, there is no access to power uh, during the day, unless you have uh, a backup such as a generator or you you have your own solar panel so and internet as well so if you don't if you there is a, an access to power but there is a internet connectivity so there are significant gaps in infrastructure that can hinder the growth of the gaming industry um so yes high speed internet reliable power supply and the gaming infrastructure as a, as a whole. Um, the second challenge is the funding. The access to funding is critical for game developer to get their project off the ground. There is a lack of funding available for game developer. Not only there is a lack of funding, but as well, um, a lot of game studio now have been um, wary of providing their um providing they providing their, their their content and not getting enough for it so funding but as well trust trust in the funders i would say um talent pool a skilled talent pool is essential for the success of the gaming industry and how we can uh today we're talking about gaming education program because there is a, a, a lack of trained professional in the gaming industry. So uh, in game design and development particularly. So that's why gaming education program uh, programs are, are, uh, are um, paramount to the success and paramount to driving economic development. And fourth challenge is, is I'm talking about the global South. I took um, an example from South Asia, Africa, and South America. But only in Africa, we've got 54 countries, and which shows the market fragmentation. The Global South is a diverse region. We're talking about the, it's, it's, there are different, uh, different countries, different languages, different cultures. There are those challenges are uh, there for different gaming preference, religions, and this make it challenging, challenging for game developers to create games that appeals to a wide range of audiences. Um, I'm going to give you an example. There is a, uh, a game which, which is very successful now, which has been developed by um, Mekan Games. Um, a, a Kenyan, uh, a Kenyan game game developers, game studios, studio, and they develop a game for uh, USA. And oftentimes we can find corporate or gaming company wanting to develop game for and and actually studios that want to develop games for the uh, global south um population so because of this diversity targeting we we know about niche market we know about persona and targeting those niche market and persona can become quite tricky um that was the challenges what are the opportunities in the same time that it's a market fragmentation we can see that it's a large and growing market as well. The Global South represent this young and techy, tech savvy population with a uh, significant uh, potential growth in the region, not only in terms of talent creation, but as well in terms of consumption of games. There is low competition 
So compared to more established gaming markets in North America and Europe, um, the gaming industry is still under relatively underdeveloped. So creating opportunities for new entrants and startup. If you want to know more about um, about the numbers, um, Game Industry Africa events, uh, we organized uh, um, a talk last month about the numbers, the trends and the trends market in Africa. Um, and this is on uh, the website gia-events.com. So government support is uh, another opportunity. Many governments in the global south are recognizing the potential of the gaming industry to drive economic growth. So we do have Kenya, Ethiopia, uh, Tunisia, Morocco, even here in Senegal, um, they, Nigeria as well, they're recognizing the potential of gaming industry. Now, what's important is really supporting uh, those governments as they get into understanding how. And this is uh, the role of my company. Uh, mobile gaming, uh, it's the opportunities because the increasing penetration of smartphone in the global south is the significant potential for mobile growth to drive growth to, for mobile gaming to drive growth in the in, in the industry. Um, you can we there is one challenge in this opportunity which is monetization of games, and again there are some. Um, a couple of opportunities and project initiatives that are in uh, in the works, such as GARA, G-A-R-A, um, that is working into monetizing games in the Africa, for example. Whilst the Global South uh, present uh, some significant challenge, there is a lot of opportunities for growth and development. So game developers in the region need to navigate these challenges and take advantage of the opportunities presented by the growing market and government support. I would say that the, I would say that um, being able to collaborate an international partnership is, is, is paramount as well. Um, we talk about infrastructure, we talk about funding, talent development, collaboration, localization, innovation, all of that are key factors for um, to help overcome these challenges. Um, so addressing those challenges, facing the gaming industry requires a multi-stakeholder approach. Uh, evolving collaboration of pa and partnership between game development, government, and of both stakeholders such as investors and international gaming company. Um, in, in conclusion, gaming has the potential to promote inclusive economic growth in the region in various ways. Gaming can contribute to economic growth by creating jobs and generating revenue. Um, game development requires a diverse set of skills, including coding, design, art, and storytelling, among others. And the industry can create jobs opportunity for people with different educational background and skill set. In addition, the industry can uh, generate revenue through game sales, in-game purchase, and advertising. The economic growth inclusive by is inclusive by reaching a diverse audience a diverse uh, in terms of age group gender cultures the game developers will can create games that reflect the diversity of their, their audience and promote inclusivity and diversity um, the gaming can promote economic growth by fostering innovation and creativity and gaming can co uh, promote economic growth by creating a positive image for the for the region. Um, the gaming industry is a phenomenal with millions of player, players worldwide, 
and high quality games can reflect the region cultures and values. So gaming has the potential to promote e economic development in the global South by creating jobs, generating revenue, reaching a diverse audience, fostering innovation and creativity, and of course, creating a positive image for the region. This is uh, Johanna. Uh, I don't know if Dan can actually put um, my slide up to if you need more information um, for uh, how to and how to help growth, economic growth. You can contact me. Um, uh, you can contact me directly. I'm waiting for Jay or Dan to put uh, my uh, um, slide or otherwise what I'm going to do. I'm just going to uh, share my screen. Uh, just bear with me one second. Okay. I've got it coming up. It was just taking a little bit there. Okay, here we go. There you okay. go. All right. So here I am. I'm currently in Senegal. I'll be very soon in uh, Saudi Arabia for uh, some time. Um, but I'm traveling be between U the UK, Senegal, and the Middle East. So you can contact me, WhatsApp. One of the things uh, is uh, WhatsApp is the best way to contact me. And uh, if you have any questions um, afterwards. Excellent. So we've got some questions in the chat here that I'm going to bring up. Uh, let's see here. In what way can someone in the global north support game development growth in the global south? Uh, as I said, it's uh, well, someone depending. If you are um, if you are an individual, you can contact either a company um, in the global south uh, to provide your time or to provide some funding or to provide your expertise to support this company. Uh, in the global south, you can also um, get some information or get together a team to come and support them with uh, um, some online online training, online training, something that is very um, very uh, simple. To, uh, to to understand, so introduction to game development, introduction to game design, uh, or provide your expertise in your in your skill to how to get into the gaming industry because there are some people that are still, that are now getting education, but uh, they don't know how to network. And now, as we are now a one global world, we can network directly on via LinkedIn or Symbol. Uh, for those who know Symbol, uh, which is a LinkedIn for the game industry. Uh, so you can, you can, you can. This is how you can uh, support the global South right now. The international, the international partnership. Excellent. Uh, a question from Discord. This is a good one. Uh, you mentioned the ratio of males to females. How can we foster a more inclusive and supportive environment within the gaming industry to encourage and empower women who are interested in pursuing a career in gaming? Uh, that's a very interesting one. Um, I don't know if you know me. Um, I This is a, a topic that I, I, I've got, a, I had a word for. So fostering uh, female in the gaming industry, and one of the the key and uh, key uh, actions that we can take is one making sure that our female colleague are seen, are viewed, um, and promoting them when they are not in the room, um, as well providing some information 
to go to schools, uh, regardless of where you are, you know, uh, providing that provided the formation, promoting the game industry as being a, a, a all inclusive industry, because unfortunately in 2023, um, it's still continuing. We still have this um, aspect that the gaming industry is for male. Um, unfortunately, women that there is still some misogyny and misogynoir in the um, playing, the, east, the streaming uh, community. So women that want to go into that um, professional side are uh, scared. So really, uh, as an individual pro uh, promoting the, um, the gaming industry as a welcoming industry for, uh, for any genders. Ah, that's good. All right, another question from Discord. What is the current state of adoption and potential growth of virtual and augmented reality tech in the global south and how might they be leveraged for various industries in the region? Um, the, potential, the current state of adoption and potential for growth of virtual and AR and the tech. Um, I don't have the numbers right now. I only have the number. I only have the number for the games industry, um, the gaming play, the gaming plane. Um, what I can say is, I can come back to you if you can send me an email address, uh, um, if, an email, or pop me a WhatsApp message, and I will provide you this information. Um, I don't want to. Uh, Unquote myself. Mm -hmm. That's a good, always a good answer. I, I will get back to you in a little bit. Okay, <laughs> well, let, let's do this one uh, from Discord. Do you feel the metaverse can help with cultural reach and job opportunity growth? Do I feel the metaverse can help with cultural reach and job opportunity growth? It is a um, metaverse. When we talk about Metaverse, we talk about gaming and VR. Everybody has got their own understanding of Metaverse first. Mm -hmm. So um, I, 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 when we talk about Metaverse, we could talk often time we talk about the, the VR. We talk about being in an integrity online uh, uh, environment. Yes, I do feel that it can help with cultural reach. Uh, job opportunity growth, as I said, it is it is something that I, I, I repeated during my whole talk during 45 minutes. I have to cut my shirt off. But yes, creating job and creating education, yes, it, it, I don't feel it is going to, and we have some case study about that. So if we're talking about the metaphors, about gaming and emerging tech and how um, we can go We've been, we can go towards uh, uh, creating that uh, economic growth. Yes, it, it, it does. The, it will help. Mm, amazing. All right, we've got one final question, and this is a good one. Are you ready? <laughs> I hope okay. that I'm not supposed to say, <laughs> come back to me. <laughs> yeah. No, no, it's fine. You know what? One of the, the most answers on indie game business is it depends. It depends. Okay, so here we go. <laughs> From Discord, what suggestions can you give to someone who is looking to start up a dev team in the global south, and what are the best ways for them to jump in and get started? Okay, so first of all, looking to start up a dev team in the global south, if you are based, make sure that uh, everybody understand the, your your actual um, understand English. Make sure and understand that you get in people that you have from different communities. So there is some basics that you're going to have. But one thing that I said, and one of the challenges that I said, is not about the skill set. It's about how to do business and how to be a leader. And um, I helped a couple of uh, uh, game dev studio from here. Um, what was the issue with their and the challenges, their pain point was not about their skill set, was about how to create that uh, team uh, and that team and that goals and those objectives and how to uh, 
uh, this business acumen, how to have this business acumen. So ensuring that you or someone or two or three person in that gift, uh, in that dev team have this uh, understanding of where you're going, your goal, the objective, where, where do you want to go? What do you want to do? And really uh, work towards reverse engineering what you need um, in order to have the success as a dev team. This is where I'm going to go. That's amazing. Thank you so much, Joanna. We appreciate you so much. This has been a really good talk. And also thank you to our amazing sponsor, Tripwire Presents. So what we've got coming up next, it's Monica Loya Clark, and she is going to be talking about running a successful influencer campaign, which, you know, super interesting to me. So thank you so much. Thank you. Bye-bye.